In this section of the blood chapter from the cardiovascular unit, we'll be looking at blood clotting or hemostasis. We'll consider the steps in hemostasis, the significance that they play, and compare what's happening physiologically in the system to the series of proteins that play a part in managing this response. Uh, known as the clotting factors. Clotting, or hemostasis, needs to be rapid. The circulatory system is a closed system. The blood's contained within the vasculature. And if something happens to disrupt that container and blood leaks out, the fluid needs to be kept in as quickly as possible. So the process of hemostasis is a very rapid response to limit the amount of blood that's going to be lost. There are three steps to the process listed here, the vascular spasm, the platelet plug formation, and coagulation. A spasm is a rapid involuntary contraction of a muscle, and when there's dam damage to a blood vessel, the smooth muscle in its wall will reflexively spasm. In doing that, causing that contraction, the diameter of the blood vessel gets narrower, which limits the amount of blood that will flow through that vessel and decrease the amount that can possibly leak out at the site of damage. The formed element known as a platelet or thrombocyte plays an important role in rapidly stopping that blood loss. By forming a plug immediately upon damage to the, the vessel. That plug will start forming the clot and then the more stable clot will form around it, keeping those thrombocytes in there, but they won't be the, the main part of the clot once it's established itself finally. They're just part of the initial formation of that plug. Coagulation is the formation of the more lasting uh, clot, which if it's on the surface of the skin is known as a scab. It's made up of a mesh of a protein called fibrin, which is the result of transformation of the plasma protein fibrinogen. And that fibrin mesh will trap platelets and red blood cells within its mesh, and they'll become part of the clot. Not that they're necessary for the clot, but their presence will be just a fact of how it forms. So the beginning of this process is detailed in these sets of pictures. Uh, first, there's some sort of injury to the blood vessel where blood's going to leak out. Now, there are circumstances where blood clots will form for other reasons, but really the point behind clotting is just this, to limit the amount of blood lost at a disruption in the circulatory system. Um, the damage to the blood vessel will initially stimulate the smooth muscle to contract. That's the vascular spasm. And as the diameter gets narrower, blood flow decreases. Um, we'll talk about that relationship, blood flow and diameter, in talking about the vasculature in a couple of chapters. But uh, here, that physical relationship is at the root of why the vascular spasm occurs to begin with. Following that initial narrowing of the blood vessel diameter, a platelet plug will form. Now, this is actually a pretty impressive example of positive feedback, which is a rare occurrence in most physiological processes that we discuss in this course. Uh, more often you'll hear of negative feedback, but this is an example of positive feedback. And what happens is the platelets become activated. And when they become activated, they release a signal that will activate more platelets. And then those newly activated platelets will release an, another signal to activate more platelets, which will just activate more platelets, and that will activate more platelets, which will activate more platelets, will activate more platelets, and so on and so forth. When platelets become activated, they change their shape, suggested in the drawing here, and they 
come together and form that platelet plug. They become sticky and they adhere to each other and to the walls of the cut vessel so that the blood loss is limited as quickly as possible. That positive feedback signal that we see is really there to speed up that platelet plug formation and to limit how fast the blood loss occurs. And that's really the point of any positive feedback signal is to just get a very rapid response. Positive feedback is stopped by something outside of the feedback loop bringing it to a close. In this case it would be the end of the blood loss, but uh, <clears throat> needless to say it stops that blood loss very quickly because of it. Occurring at the same time as a platelet plug formation really is the coagulation, which is the formation of a protein mesh that we call the clot. And it ends up incorporating the platelets as well as red blood cells into it and becomes a more permanent cover to a site of blood loss, allowing the tissues to heal up around it. As we pull out to look at the whole figure from the book as one, we see that the three steps that I just ran through are laid out alongside the cascade events of the clotting factors that are listed here. Now clotting factors are a series of proteins. They're produced by the liver for the blood and they are able to regulate the activity that leads to blood clotting by having a series of reactions or a cascade of reactions. One factor has to be activated which will cause another factor to be activated which will cause another factor to be activated which will cause another factor to be activated, etc, etc. And that makes sure that there's tight control over it. If activation occurs in one place when it's not supposed to, then somewhere down the line of that cascade, the activation can be shut off and hopefully we won't create a clot unexpectedly. The clotting factors are numbered by Roman numerals. So there's clotting factor 1, 2, 3, etc, etc. I'm not concerned that you know the clotting factors by number, but I want to show you what the cascade looks like and consider it in connection with the events that I just described. And I will mention the clotting factors that you do need to know specifically. There are two pathways that lead to blood clotting, the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. Now they're not really separate pathways, they're just two aspects of what's happening here involving different players. In the book, the intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway are described using a misleading or misunderstood definition of those terms. So I've changed it here to reflect what the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways really are. Intrinsic means within, in this case what's within the blood that is part of clotting, and extrinsic means without, that is what's outside of the blood. And for intrinsic pathway what happens is the platelets are exposed to collagen or some other aspect that causes activation. There are situations where clots are thrown by accident and the intrinsic pathway is started when it's not supposed to be. Uh, but in a, a real situation where clotting needs to take place, it's because the platelets have been exposed to collagen. And collagen stimulates them to become activated and then they release their factor that causes more platelets to become activated, etc., etc. The extrinsic pathway is when there's something outside of the blood that has an effect. Now the book says extravascular effects, which is actually incorrect. Vascular refers to blood vessel. Extrinsic actually only means outside of the blood itself. And usually what it is, is it's started by a chemical signal called tissue factor that's released from damaged tissue and that damaged tissue is going to be the blood vessel wall. Now the book saying extravascular isn't exactly incorrect because it's very unlikely that a blood vessel will be damaged 
without surrounding tissues being damaged also. So you could say the tissue factor is coming from some other type of damaged tissue. It doesn't really matter where it's coming from. It's going to be the signal that causes activation of platelets. Now you can see here that the two uh, are separate cascades. The intrinsic pathway is slightly more involved. There's three steps instead of just one um, in the intrinsic, extrinsic pathway. Uh, they both result in the complex formation of a particular set of proteins. Which proteins they are depend on whether it's the intrinsic or extrinsic pathway, but that complex formation is then going to lead to the next step, which is this common pathway. As the figure puts it, the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways have still not quite come to their final fruition. Um, that clotting factor 10, not clotting factor X, clotting factor 10 um, is sort of the end of the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways. Although it is really a common pathway at that point because both of them cause that change. But the final common pathway begins with clotting factor 2, which is known as prothrombin. And prothrombin is a proenzyme. Pro in this sense means before. So it's an enzyme that has yet to be activated. And what happens is prothrombin is activated into thrombin, or tissue factor 2A. Exactly what's happening here is simply that a protein of a certain length is being cleaved down or cut down or broken down to a smaller protein. And what's being removed is blocking the active site of the hormone thrombin. So prothrombin is just thrombin with a little extra that blocks its active site. So it can't be an active enzyme. But once that blockage fragment is removed, thrombin becomes an active enzyme. And thrombin's main purpose as an enzyme is to convert the plasma protein fibrinogen, which is also known as tissue factor 1, into fibrin, or tissue factor 1A. Fibrinogen is obviously a soluble protein because it's dissolved in the plasma. Fibrin is an insoluble protein, which means that it falls out of solution. It will no longer stay in the plasma. Instead, it'll just sort of drop out of solution and stay where it is. As more and more fibrin comes out of solution, it forms up this mesh. Now thrombin helps with the formation of that mesh, stabilizing it. And that's the clot, fibrin fibers that are cross-linked or attached to each other by bonds, stabilizing and making that mesh, which will have caught platelets and red blood cells into it, and that will have sealed off the clot. Now, in doing that, it, the clot mesh will attach to the damaged ends of the blood vessel and help to pull things together, along with the adherence or stickiness of the platelets. Everything kind of pulls in, shrinks at a very small scale, and helps to pull the cut or damaged tissue together and improve its chances of repairing itself. Now, essentially what's being repaired is an epithelium, and epithelia are very good at repairing themselves, especially when they bring cut edges close together. Okay? And that's what the clot's really all about. Blood clotting can be a very confusing aspect of physiology, and so I've put together some bullet lists to highlight some of the important parts of all of this. So uh, I'm going to repeat sort of what we've gone through here again with these text slides just to reinforce some of the ideas. The extrinsic and intrinsic pathways, like I said a little bit ago, are actually not separate pathways. They're things that tend to occur together but they do have some differences about them. First off, the extrinsic pathway is a very rapid event. 
it has fewer steps in it, so it can ha happen. It can happen very quickly, um, and it really is driven by trauma, by the damage of tissue, and so the more severe the trauma, the faster the extrinsic pathway will lead to the uh, formation of a blood clot. The basis of it is this molecule called tissue factor, which is also known as clotting factor three, that's released by damaged tissues. And those damaged tissues are stimulating blood clotting. It's coming from outside of the blood, so it's an extrinsic signal. Um, <clears throat> it's not necessarily coming from the blood vessel wall, but it very well could be. You could also think of it as, as coming from the other tissues that the blood vessel is passing through. Exactly where it's coming from is not important. It's outside of the blood, which makes it extrinsic. It's going to eventually cause the activation of prothrombinase, which is the clotting factor 10. Um, and that's what converts prothrombin into thrombin. Now, it uses calcium. Calcium is just necessary for blood clotting in general, and there are steps within the extrinsic pathway that require calcium to be present. Now, the intrinsic pathway is actually a fairly slow set of reactions. There's a few steps in the cascade, so it can take some time. This is going to actually help regulate what happens. If the intrinsic pathway is all that's affected, then hopefully something else could come along and stop the series of changes that will lead to a blood clot. Um, it is based on what's happening in the blood, which really means it's about the um, activation of platelets themselves. Most often that's because of exposure to collagen, which is not found in blood. Um, but there are other situations. If you've ever seen a Plavix commercial, they have a pretty good um, animation showing the narrowing of an artery, which would be from a cholesterol plaque or atherosclerosis or something like that, and platelets that would normally have a fairly uh, wide diameter blood vessel to move through suddenly get to force through a narrowed space. And when that happens, they physically run into each other. And platelets running into each other will actually cause activation. Now, if you think about it with the vascular spasm, it's going to cause a similar effect as the blood vessel narrows at the site of damage because of the vascular spasm. That'll also cause platelets to run into each other, which is another aspect of the intrinsic pathway. But those platelets are also going to be exposed to collagen, which will just reinforce the extra intrinsic pathway and speed it up to happen alongside the extrinsic pathway. Now, like the extrinsic pathway, the intrinsic pathway is also going to require calcium ions to occur. The final common pathway is going to be reached when the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways converge on the formation of something called prothrombinase. Now, prothrombinase is actually a complex of clotting factor 10 and clotting factor 5 in its activated form. Prothrombinase, the ASC ending tells you that it's an enzyme, is the enzyme that changes prothrombin into thrombin. Calcium ions need to be present for it to work too. So once thrombin is made from prothrombin, it can then become the enzyme that converts fibrinogen into the loose fibrin threads that are insoluble, and it helps to stabilize them into a sturdy clot. Now, thrombin is also involved in some positive feedback, which is not demonstrated in the pictures from the book that I showed you a second ago, but besides converting fibrinogen into fibrin and stabilizing the clot, thrombin will also feed back and activate more prothrombinase, making more of that factor 10, factor 5 complex.
and it will increase intrinsic pathway activity by increasing the amount of activated platelets. The two of those will increase more thrombin production and then more fibrinogen is converted into fibrin and the clot forms faster. Thrombin also will feed back and make more prothrombinase, activate more intrinsic pathway activity, make more thrombin, which will feed back, make more prothrombinase, make more thrombin, feed back, more prothrombinase, more thrombin. So it's another example of positive feedback in the cycle, which again increases the rapidity of the clot formation and limits the amount of blood that will be lost. This brings us to the final stage of coagulation. Now, all of this, the clotting factors acting together, is coagulation, but the end point of it is the formation of this fibrin mesh clot, which then will tighten. The stabilization of that mesh will help to pull the damaged sides of the tissue together along with what the, the platelets can do, and it decreases the possibility that more damage will occur. Fibroblasts in the connective tissue surrounding the damaged area will form in and start to form a scar, and new endothelial cells from the blood vessel wall will grow and repair that lining, thanks to the presence of that coagulation, that clot forming. Consider this question um, when you feel that you've reached an answer hit the next button to go into the next slide which will re reveal the correct answer. Blood is a connective tissue, but unlike all of the other connective tissues, it does not have collagen. And in fact, when blood is exposed to collagen, that initiates the intrinsic pathway response. So collagen not found in blood and is actually a starter for blood clotting. 